All right, hey guys. I never properly uh, introduced myself. I just started posting random diet crap. And uh, I want to do a bit of a <clears throat> get to know the quad father video today. So today, Friday, shoulder day more importantly, we are going to do a day in the life of the quad father. I'm going to try and keep it pretty short. I'm just going to do a couple clips today. Um, I'm just gotten in my car, taking my hydroxy cut. I've taken my Maltese. I've taken my fish oils. Got my aminos, my creatine for my intra workout. That's what I take. Everybody asks. That's all I take right now. And uh, I'm gonna go hit some shoulders. Muscle Farm posted a um, a shoulder workout this morning on Instagram, and I screenshot it. I figured, hey, why not? Let's try it. So I'm gonna get going to the gym now. Heading to Gold's Langley. Best gym in Langley, by the way. I uh, I used to train at a YMCA. And uh, YMCA was great. I really liked it. It was a high-end uh, facility. It was only a couple years old when I started training there. Oh, I've got AE lock on here. There we go. Auto exposure lock, I assume. Um, anyways, I used to train at the YMCA. And uh, that was a good place to go. But uh, they only had 100-pound dumbbells. So when I moved out to um, Abbotsford, which is far away from where I lived in Tawasson. I had to find a gym that was somewhere between my work and uh, Abbotsford, so Gold's was perfect. They got 120 pound dumbbells, they have a, an Olympic swimming pool, three lanes, they got a nice big hot tub, they got steam sauna, it's like full service, and it's the only gym in town that really has all that stuff. So it's really been great, I really like it. Anyways, I, I'm lucky enough to live about two kilometers from Gold's, so a mile and a half or a mile if you're from the States. It's just a quick little drive here. And then I'm gonna head down to the shop, bend up and powder coat some parts for a customer, and then I'll uh, head home and spend some time with the family tonight, Friday night, so. I'm not really dieting yet, I'm having more cheat meals than I should, so I might have a nice little cheat meal tonight, maybe order some pizza or something. Anyways, um, yeah, should be good. See you guys soon. Got the Gold's Gym ready to go. Check it out. A nice little dead rat. Alright, so I'm here at Gold's Gym Langley. I just finished training shoulders. Took me about an hour and a half. Just on the treadmill cooling off. I, uh, I did a muscle farm workout I saw on Instagram today. It was pretty good. Nine working sets on the um, shoulder press machine. I ended up modifying the reps a little, they were a little too low. I did uh, three sets of eight, three sets of six, and three sets of four. I did uh, 155, 185, 195, and it was tough, it was really good. And then I did um, uh, five sets of eight shoulder press with 65s. Then I did push press with 115 behind the neck, five sets of eight. And then I did rear delt flies with 35s, I did five sets of eight. I used an incline bench, laid down with my chest on the bench, I did rear flies, then I did supersets of side laterals to front laterals, and then I did uh, rope pulls to the face, and I did upright rows of the cable. So it was pretty good, it took a while, but it was really great. I'm just on the treadmill now, I'm just gonna walk for about 10 minutes, and uh, yeah, that'll be it. So I'll be checking in with you guys soon. Thanks for watching. All right, so I just finished up uh, my training session at Gold's during shoulder, it was awesome. It was awesome. And I just finished picking up some powder coat for my job today. And yeah, I should be at the shop in like 10, 15 minutes. Um, this is a topic that's come up a lot recently, just after this last show. I, uh, I sat beside the, um, the old head judge in our local organization, Chris Parker. And uh, you know, he had a couple comments about the men's physique guys that were on stage and I've had a lot of comments coming from people about men's physique competitors at the amateur level being too big a lot of people think you know do you think you're too big like you're bringing a really like you're bringing a very bodybuilder look to men's physique and like a lot of people have the impression that like guys like me 200 pounds 5'11 we shouldn't be doing well in men's physique at the amateur level like there's no distinction between uh, a men's physique athlete and a bodybuilder at some of these shows which is true like I, I have to agree 
But at the same time, if I'm bringing a look to a, an amateur show that is very close or it, it closely emulates a Men's Physique Pro, why should I be scrutinized? Why should I be criticized? Why should I not do well? Because I brought too good of a look or too much size compared to everybody else in the show. Like when the judges are looking at the guys on stage, they shouldn't be looking and saying, who looks the most appropriate for this level? Who looks the most appropriate for who's here? And saying, okay, let's give it to that guy. They should say, we know what a pro looks like. We, that The pro look is the best look. That's like the 10 out of 10 look. And if somebody happens to bring that to an amateur show, they should win. You would never expect a guy to show up at an amateur show, be like a shredded 280 pounds, look exactly like Phil Heath, and they'd go, hey, you know what? That guy, he looks good, but he's, he looks too good compared to everybody else. He shouldn't win. Like, that's just ridiculous. If he brought that look, he would win. And he would go to provincials, he'd go to nationals, and he'd get his pro card. So for the same, for the same reason, if, if a men's physique athlete shows up at an amateur show, and he brings, you know, like a Jeremy Buendia, or a Sadiq, a, a Sadiq physique, he shouldn't be criticized and scrutinized for being too big and looking better than half the amateur bodybuilders. He's bringing a good look, he's bringing a professional look, and he should go all the way. So, I think I think that kind of covers it. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the, the amateur bodybuilders are smaller than a lot of the men's physique athletes, but men's physique isn't about size. Like, big or small, it's not about that. It's about presenting yourself, in a positive light it's about having energy on stage looking good having aesthetics and size size is kind of nothing like you'll see skinny guys win you'll see big guys win but it's about having that presence that look the aesthetics the shape the taper and guys shouldn't be shouldn't be put down or they shouldn't not do well because they're too big you know obviously there's a line if, if you're 230 pounds and you're like 5'9 you're too big but if you fit that profile, if you fit that frame, if you have that silhouette that looks like somebody on the Olympia stage, you should win. And yeah, I think uh, I think I can pull it off. I'm feeling pretty positive going into BCs here, and I, I hope to go to nationals this year. And I think um, I think if I bring the look and I, I present it well, I think I'll do really well. Anyways, soon. Talk soon. All right, so we're at the shop now. Uh, it's just afternoon. I. Uh, I used to work earlier, like eight, nine in the morning, and I'd work all afternoon, and then I would, uh, I would go to the gym around four o'clock. But Gold's Gym has got some new management. They're doing tons of free promos, really cheap memberships. So a lot of guys now are training at my uh, my old prime time, and uh, it's gotten kind of nutty. I started training earlier, around nine, ten in the morning, back uh, in September for my last prep, and it's just kind of stuck. So I start working around like eleven or noon now. And I'll work till six or seven, and I'll do some work at home later in the evening. But uh, yeah, it works out really well for me. Um, I just got my uh, meal prep here. Just tossed it in the microwave, nice and steamy. If you've never put salsa on your chicken and rice before, you haven't lived. The salsa I put on, it's uh, 10 calories for every tablespoon, so I tossed a couple tablespoons on there. And uh, it really helps the flavor. It's delicious. So um, yeah, try that. I also uh, I bu I bought these containers a little while ago. I hate the uh, I hate the Ziploc or the Glad uh, throwaway um, containers that most people use for their meal prep. So these are really good. I always seal the lid on, and I, I throw it in the microwave for about a minute and a half. They're not frozen. They're just refrigerated. I usually cook them every weekend, so they're good for three or four or five days in the microwave or in the fridge. Sorry. And uh, yeah, so the leaving the lid on it kind of steams it. Do a complain about having um, dry chicken, dry rice. I find if I leave the lid on with the salsa and everything, I get a nice little steamed effect. So it's delicious. I got my uh, water. I use the uh, the water sweetener, the Mio Sport, or no, sorry, it's just a regular Mio uh, Cran Raspberry. It's absolutely delicious. And yeah, I am going to eat my lunch now, and then I'm going to kill the metal fabricating for the day should be great talk soon all right so i just watched back that last video and i noticed that um my lip was really bad in that video i don't know if you guys noticed or not but um i got a bit of a fat lip um it's kind of embarrassing actually but basically after my last show i was refeeding or binging whatever you want to call it i was reverse dieting and uh anybody who's ever done a show and dieted down to like a really low body fat knows when it comes time to eat again, you get a little nutty, and uh, I managed to chomp down on my own lip like really hard, 
to the point where I like burst one of my like saliva ducts in my lip. And what happens is um, it basically turns into a cyst and uh, one of the side effects, one of the bad parts about living in a country with free healthcare is uh, when you need when you need something like this fixed or you need a surgery, you have to book it and you gotta wait. So I've been waiting since January now to get this fixed and I, I basically have to like slash it with like a razor or like jam a pin in it and drain it like every three or four days. So it gets bad and then I have to drain it. And um, basically that's what I have to do until they call me and they tell me they're ready to, uh, to fix it. Uh, anyways, I'm just here in the shop. I wanted to show you guys kind of what I do. I tell a lot of people I'm a metal fabricator and they're like, what does that mean? You fabricate metal, like you make metal? And it's like, no, I don't fabricate metal. I, uh, I take metal and I fabricate parts out of it. So like today I'm doing these parts down here. So for example, this guy here, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it in my press brake. Try not to cut off my finger. Now we gotta bend in there. Anyways, once it's bent, I gotta go through the whole stack of these and then I gotta bend up all these guys. Once those are all bent up, I take them over there to my little dungeon and uh, I turn on my oven and I gotta powder coat them all flat black. So that's my job today. I gotta do about 60 of these. These are uh, Tacoma uh, grills. They're uh, for a friend of mine who sells his parts on his website. And yeah, that's what I do. All right, so I'm doing meal number four here across the street from the shop at the Chop Leap. Probably one of my favorite places to eat out right now. Uh, they have really clean food and it's well priced. And uh, yeah, it's all fresh. It's wraps, salads. Um, they do quesadillas and stuff. I haven't had any of that yet. I've just mostly been doing their bowls and their salads and wraps. So somebody suggested I try the Southwest wrap. I thought I'd wait till I ate half of it and do a little review on the taste, taste test. And I'd have to say it's delicious. Everything I've had here so far has been so good. So um, yeah, another one knocked out of the park. Um, I ate my last meal, meal three at about uh, 12 o'clock. And I, I like to try to push my meals forward as late as possible. Um, I find it very difficult to sleep on an empty stomach. So I find if I can push my meals all as far out as I can, I work as long as, as long as I can until I just basically I'm starving. So I, I've eaten this meal, this is meal four, four o'clock. I'll probably eat again at seven or eight. Uh, depends when I leave the shop. I should be done at the shop around seven, 7.30. And I'll have my meal tonight at around eight and then I'll have something small before I go to bed. But fine, if I go to sleep on a really empty stomach, I, I wake up in the middle of the night or whatever, I, I won't fall asleep. So um, yeah, calories in, calories out. I don't I don't have any problem with eating right before I go to sleep. I don't think it'll hurt your, uh, hurt your progress or anything as long as those calorie numbers are right. And yeah, so that's my day so far. All right guys, all done at the shop. It's about eight o'clock. Took a little longer than I wanted to get everything done, but whatever, we're good. That's a typical work day for me. I train into the uh, late, out, late morning, early afternoon if I have to. And I work till it's done. And that's that. Heading home now, gonna get some grub. Try to snack as little as possible and hit the hay. Thanks for uh, following me today. I'll try and do one more video before I go to bed. And yeah, have a good night. All right. It's it's post dinner and it's time for movies. So we got a really good one going on here and mama's watching it with the back of her head. Nighty night. Thanks for watching. Nighty night.